All right, everybody. Well, um, welcome. Um, trying to check out who's here and who's joined us. And um, some of them are familiar names and some of them aren't. Um, and I may be a familiar person to some of you, but um, I'm also the, the director of uh, community development here at Red Hat. And I'm really thrilled to have um, Christian Glombeck with me today. And hopefully Vadim and Charo may chime in and join as well. Um, and what we were, thought we would kick off today's meetup was a little state of OKD4. Um, we've been doing a lot of work over the past year getting OKD, um, getting people to migrate from um, OKD3 to OKD4. It's got a new architecture. There's a lot going on under the hood and there's a pretty vibrant community already around OKD, but we're always looking for more people. So um, Christian is here with us. I'm gonna ask him to um, give this talk and then we will have Q&A and conversations afterwards. So Christian, take it away. All right, thank you, Diane. Hello, everybody. I'm Christian Glombeck. I am an engineer on the OpenShift organization um, and I work on the OpenShift, on the OKD working group as well with Diane and Vadim and Charo, um, who will hopefully join us later. All right, um, so what is OKD? Uh, OKD is a community distribution of Kubernetes, first of all. It is the OpenShift flavor, the OpenShift code base, uh, on top of Fedora CoreOS. And Fedora CoreOS, uh, the operating system here, is actually included in OKD. It's become an implementation detail in OpenShift. Uh, so uh, let's have a quick look at the agenda. We'll, we'll have a quick overview um, of OKD4. Then we'll quickly talk about the state of OKD4. And we might have a demo later if Charo uh, shows up. OK, so OKD4, a community distribution of Kubernetes plus plus. Um, and as you may have already uh, heard or know about, uh, OpenShift is a distribution of Kubernetes, but we add a, a lot of extra uh, niceties to it. Um, and OKD is the community version of that. So we have automated installation, patching, and updates from the operating system all the way up uh, to the cluster, one lifecycle for cluster and operating system. And it would normally look like this, um, as you can see here. You have any, any platform provider uh, at the bottom. And then on top of that, you'll be installing um, Fedora CoreOS as part. That'll be actually part of the uh, OKD installer, so it'll all be done automatically. It'll install uh, Linux hosts, a cluster of Linux hosts, and then it'll uh, install the, the actual cluster uh, software, the uh, Kubernetes distribution that OpenShift is on top of that. And um, this way, we provide a great platform for running your applications um on top of all that so it's a great uh okd and openshift are great for uh, both hosting and also for developing you we actually have a lot of uh, development tools here uh, that make it easy for uh, developing teams or uh, individual developers to uh, get started right away um, with working and implementing services for uh, that that are run on openshift Okay, yeah, and here's a quick look at the platforms that we uh, support. So we support bare metal, um, Overge virtual, virtualization, OpenStack, AWS, Azure, uh, Google Cloud, uh, vSphere. So there's uh, literally all of them, um, and we're constantly adding more to them. It's we we, uh, we support all the platforms that are supported by um, by the OpenShift product as well. So. Uh, Let's talk about the state of OKD today and tomorrow. So we're currently um, at stable release 4.6, um, which is the same that uh, OCP, the, uh, the OpenShift Compute Platform product uh, of Red Hat is at as well. Uh, we are obviously aiming for community co uh, contributions. And we've been, um, we've been actually able to, uh, yeah, to get feedback from the community already and um, solve a few bugs that hadn't been reported by our customers. And so that's really great to see that we can really include the community here in our product um, development lifecycle. Um, so yeah, the, the entirety of OKD is really a, a collaboration between different projects. So we have the Fedora community, 
that uh, provides us with the great um, Fedora CoreOS operating system. And then we have the operator hub on the kind of on the other end of that, uh, which provides services that you can actually deploy on your cluster. Um, and in the middle of this is OKD, which provides, which bundles it all together and provides the platform. Um, yeah, we, we have bespoke operators for OKD. So a few of them um, are specifically made for OpenShift and for OKD. They don't um, run on, op we, we don't test a few of them on, on upstream Kubernetes, but uh, for example, the, the OpenShift pipelines operator is specifically made for OpenShift. So um, you can find these operators on the Operator Hub community catalog. And they, they are available um, when you inst install a new, in a new instance of, a, of an OKD cluster, you'll have the Operator Hub catalog on the side, and it's really just a click for the cluster admin to install an operator that will provide you with, uh, with new features for the entire cluster. Yeah, uh, what we thrive to do in OKD is enable early adoption of upcoming technologies. So we really want to be um, the first to um, to be able to to use a new feature in uh, both upstream Kubernetes and also um, the OpenShift code base. So release four point seven is coming soon. We have rolling releases, so we release about every two weeks, and um, we're currently on four point six point. I'm not sure seven maybe, um, and so uh, the next one or the, the one after that will be the first 4.7 release. So it's, uh, it's coming soon. All right, and now I don't have the demo. I'm not sure if, if Charo is here. If he is, uh, I would like to hand it over to him. Yeah, I think Charo is, um, is out of action um, due to time zone issues. So um, what I what just really wanted to talk about here a little bit is um, some of you may have, be aware of the code ready containers offerings that we have um, for OpenShift. Um, and this helps us bring a single node OKD4 cluster um, to you, to your laptop or your workstation um, for you to easily test it out and um, check out OKD and have, you know, take it, take it for a test run. Um, and we do have that. If you go to okd.io, there are links all there. For, um, there and there's Vedim and Vedim is in now. Um, if we can make him a speaker too, that would be great, Jen. Um, and that, yeah. So I'm just going to pause there for Vadim's comment here, which was about the version. And, and, slide. and while we wait for Vadim, um, yeah, about CRC, I think you you explained it already. Um, we have the CRC uh, version for OKD as well as for OCP. So if you want to. Uh, test something on your laptop uh, without any kind of uh, contract that you need to enter, then uh, the OKD version of CRC is the way to go. And yeah, it's based on the code ready containers and uh, includes Fedora CoreOS as well. It's actually a virtualized uh, little cluster that you run on, on the local machine. Uh, in the future, we will also be able to run single node clusters uh, just locally. So no virtualization, which will make it even faster. But uh, if you want to really get a full-blown cluster for uh, development purposes or just uh, evaluation or demos, uh, CRC is awesome. So it looks like Vadim is still having trouble to join. Um, and he just corrected me in the chat. Uh, we don't have uh, Zstream versions uh, for OKD. So it's a rolling release. We actually put a date on it. Um, I'm not sure the, the, which one it is, uh, but we've had a few 4.6 releases. And one of the coming ones will be the first 4.7 release. All right. So yeah, uh, and this is the call out. Uh, do please do join us in the working group uh, if you're interested. Um, it's the place where you can just come and say hello or uh, request new features, which is the thing uh, our community uh, like to do, uh, which is obviously a great. So yeah, and we have a, a Slack uh, channel, which is OpenShift Dev on the official Kubernetes Slack. We also have, um, that's really all the channels on the OpenShift Commons uh, Slack, 
um, you'll be dropped into in the general chat when you when you join this. And yeah, that's another place you can ask. Then we have a Google group, which we also use as our email list. Um, and it's the, the OKD-WG uh, working uh, Google group. Uh, if you want to receive uh, invitations to our meetings, uh, to our working group meetings, please, please do join that group as well. Uh, and also for out of band discussions. And then we have two repositories um, for OKD in the OpenShift uh, organization on GitHub. First of all, the community uh, repository, which is uh, for things like this, uh, planning, uh, community outreach, and all the things um, that really have to do with the community and outreach. And then we have the OKD repository, which is our technical issue tracker. So if you have um, an issue, please do uh, file an issue on OKD. And if you want to join the working group, you can find all the information in the community repository as well. And I see Vadim is here now. Uh, good to see you. Oh, sorry, joining took quite some time. Uh, just to add some more things, what Christian has said, the whole goal of the OKD project is to have all the features that OCP has and our customers can enjoy using support, but also include community into decisions, into what they can support, all of the parts which OKD consists, not just only open source, they are also available for community to play with, modify some parts, and release their own payloads, and interact with us in a more active fashion than a closed loop of have, being a customer of OCP. Well said. I think the, the other, uh, and the other group that we work pretty tightly with is the Fedora um, CoreOS um, group. So because we are, um, that is one of our dependencies at the moment. Um, so we also have a lot of um, insights into how Fedora CoreOS is going in each of those releases and the impact it has on OKD. So there's a lot of collaboration between the two communities, um, which is quite nice as well. Um, there is one question in the chat. I don't know, Jen, if you can uh, turn on people's faces and we can have Q&A now. Um, that would be great. I don't think Charo is coming to do a demo. Um, so let's see if we can get um, Eric on. And his question was um, basically around um, the single node. Um, and, and you. Yeah, maybe I can take this. Uh, currently, uh, the way we do single node in in the container ready uh, deployment in the CRC deployment is a bit because it's virtualized. Um, it is a bit different than what we aim to do in the long term for single node clusters. So we want to have uh, single node clusters that run uh, natively on on the host and without virtualization. Um, that is currently in progress. That effort and we will. I think there will be something in four point seven. It won't support upgrades yet, and then. Um, in 4.8 or, or later, it'll, it'll be supporting upgrades as well. So, uh, and at that point, we might reconsider uh, changing the default for uh, for OKD. But right now, because uh, the the OpenShift installer that we use to install uh, usual OKD clusters and the way CRC uh, is installed isn't really uh, the same, we can't just uh, flip the switch here because the, the installer doesn't support single node, uh, installing single node clusters yet. Uh, once it does, we might consider actually changing that. Although it is obviously a big feature, a big part of OKD to be highly available to deliver that uh, kind of uh, certainty to to any user. So uh, it might we, we'll have to discuss it at that point. I think it, it does make sense uh, also to have it a, a, a highly highly available deployment by default, uh, in my opinion. But that is certainly up for discussion with the community at that point. And so I'm, I'm not seeing too many other questions in the chat here. So um, I think that one of the things that we're really been focusing on um, as a working group, and you, know, you can stop sharing slides and we just go to talking heads now, um, is um, getting more community involvement and in testing on different um, deployment configurations. So um, that's been one of the, the hot topics in our, um, our, our working group meetings, which are biweekly. So, um, they're biweekly. The, the main working group meetings and the documentation ones are on 
um, the opposite weeks. So um, we're really trying to push through getting better testing pipelines done um, and supported by the community. Um, I'm, I'm curious if anybody here who is uh, in in the session is currently using OKD yet, because uh, there's a lot of names that I don't recognize from the working group. So I, we would love to have you and your feedback in that um, that group if you're using OKD or thinking about it. Um, yeah, and there's the link to the calendar um, can be found right there um, in the chat. So that would be great if you could join us um, and give us your feedback. Um, are there any other questions from people out there? No, that was a quick run through. Um, Eric, who's not on audio and video, has a second question. As a personal outside the box challenge, I currently try to participate in open source projects without providing code. So maybe you can discuss a little what things are that you can do in your community that could use two more hands or another brain, but doesn't require pushing code. Well, now that you've said that, on the other weeks, um, testing is great. <laughs> and that's what we, why I bring it up here, because it's a, a wonderful thing. Um, and we are going to schedule soon um, sort of a, a hackathon, teach people how to set up testing pipelines for OKD in the coming months. So um, if you join the working group, um, Google group, you'll get an announcement of that. Um, documentation, we are currently um, redoing the okd.io site um, and updating um, the documentation. So there's uh, on the opposite weeks, also in the Fedora project calendar um, is a documentation session. So next Tuesday at 1700 UTC, which is I'm on West Coast time. So that's 9 a.m. for me, noon on East Coast. Um, we will have a session and there's a lot of holes in our documentation um, and we are trying to get them up to snuff um, and keep them up to date. So there's very, very many minor, small tasks, grammatical errors, things that you can help us with. And then um, one of our, our key goals is we have um, pretty good technical documentation from my point of view, but not great um, getting started documentation. Um, we kind of start at a higher level probably than we should. Um, and so we're trying to bring that back down so that people will get, um, get, a, get make it easier for people to start um, with OKD, whether it's with CRC or just deploying it themselves. Um, then there's another question. I also wanted to add for the starting place so to help the community. Um, a lot of um, quite a lot of chunk in our jobs is usually revolving around installation and upgrades. So we try to focus on that and we're covering it well, pretty well, let's say. The problem comes is how do people use their clusters? What are their usual workflows? Which problems do they hit during the whole life cycle? Are they running some data mining? Are they running just some engine spots and so on? And learning how people actually use OKD for their purposes would be a great insight into what we should do better and what we should focus on. Because currently, um, I work in the upgrades team, so my whole world revolves around upgrades. But focusing on some actual workflows and how to improve the experience during their daily usage of the cluster uh, would be immensely important. I see there is another question in the chat uh, in the new community. Just oh wait, hello. What is the situation with the building of the Red Hat operators? Is the statement regarding usage um, still valid? So um, you should be able to run uh, all the operators, uh, even from the uh, from the subscription catalog uh, for the Red Hat product. You should be able to run them on OKD and vice versa. So if you have an OCP cluster, you should be able to run the OKD operators on it. Obviously, that is not very well tested, and we don't build all of the operators that we have um, a subscription product for currently for the community product, but we want to change that so that we really get um, the entire palette of, uh, of operators available to OKD as well. Um, it should be like if it's if it's in one of those catalogs, you should be able to install it and it should uh, it should run. If it doesn't, that is not expected and uh, please file an issue in that case. Roberto is asking um, and is saying he's new to the community and he did join us last week um, or this earlier this week. Um, 
I think it was on a Tuesday, um, probably the working group meeting, I guess we didn't introduce you. So I apologize for that. Um, and he's asking how I can get um, an assignment from the OKD backlog. That sounds, Vadim, like somebody you want to know. Um, we do have a, a pretty long at the moment um, uh, uh, issues list, but I think most of them are um, a little more, they're not low hanging fruit, I would say. Would you agree with that statement, Vadim? Um, so we're working on getting a tagging system for the issues so that we can add in some low hanging um, fruit for people to do. But depending on, um, Roberto, what your expertise is, there's um, a lot of things to experiment with. There's some mixed architecture and multi-architecture work going on um, with OKD that's just kicking off. Um, so it really depends on what you are interested in and what sort of workloads and where you're deploying. Um, I did mention we're going to try and host, um, using Hopin, um, a uh, hackathon on testing and setting up testing pipelines for the different variations. So um, that might be a place to jump in as well. So again, I point everybody to join the Google group for announcements and emails about that. So Vadim, are there any issues in the issues list that are low hanging fruit I, I, at all? Like things that you just need people to test maybe? Testing the latest nightlies is a definitely great thing, especially with 4.7 stream upcoming. We would definitely need some help on that. It may sound boring, but uh, this is incredibly important because we have to at the same time, not break other people's stable releases, but also prepare the new stable from the upcoming for seven. And the lack of time is a serious one. Um, we also have a contributing guide that definitely needs some love uh, because it's very generic. We cannot think of the ways how community can contribute right now. It's up to them which parts to change. So we're interested to find out what are the most common cases where people would like to change LKD payload. For instance, setting up a new branding or replacing Prometheus or something like that. So um, that's not exactly low hanging fruit because it requires some experience, but that's definitely a good starting point to expand our uh, documentation. Just to add to that, our OKD uh, issue tracker really is a just a collection uh, of issues of the out of the entire realm of OpenShift. So, what we really some most of the times then do is triage that and um, hand it over to to the team that would actually uh, own that component uh, where the issue occurred. Uh, so it it is not always super easy to uh, jump into code work co code co contributions here. Um, because the first step um, is oftentimes to actually find the component this uh, this issue actually sits in um, and actually find the team that knows what what's happening. Uh, because we we do what 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 OKD essentially is is a collection a bundle of a lot of softwares and we put it together and make it into a system that works. But if something breaks, it's mostly in one of those components and it might not be super easy to see. Uh, so yeah, if you if you do have uh, some knowledge, uh, you can also help with bug triage in our OKD issue tracker. So just go through that to see if if there's something actionable for you in there, or something you might have uh, some domain knowledge, that would be absolutely helpful as well. Perfect. So uh, Roberto, um, don't worry, I've got your name and I'll find your number, and um, we'll hopefully get you um, onboarded and and take advantage of your enthusiasm. Um, and if you've, you've tried OpenShift recently, tr please do give um, one of the nightly releases of OKD a try. Um, it's a, diff a slightly different experience because you are with um, Fedora Core OS. So, um, you know, there, there are some things that, that are definitely different and there's documentation on that um, in the doc site, docs.okd.io. Um, and you know we'd love to have your feedback and as i said and i'll keep repeating myself um next tuesday um there is the docs meeting so and our focus next week is on um 
two parts, the contributor's guide work and on getting the documentation on what it takes to set up a testing pipeline. So um, Jamie um, from Magira, Magria from U University of Michigan is going to help us get that documentation done. So, um, and then testing the testing documentation. So there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of work to be done. So it's an ongoing and it's pretty often we do releases. So, you know, setting up these pipelines is really one of our key focuses right now and getting the community to help and give feedback on that. That said, in the issues list on, um, in the, the GitHub repo, um, if there's some, an open issue that you'd like to test and, you know, see if you can replicate, that's always a good thing too. Because um, sometimes it's really hard to replicate people's um, issues since we're not all on the same testing pipelines. So that's been that's been one of the, the things that we've hit hard um, recently. So um, that would be a great place to start. So I'm looking to see if there are any other questions from people on the call. And again, I, I just call out if anybody here um, is using OKD already, We'd love to have you join um, the Google group and give us your feedback or join one of the working group meetings um, coming soon. So Christian, if you want to share that um, resources slide one more time. One sec. That's OK. <laughs> and then we. All right, Roberto, we look forward to seeing you. All right, here's a premature enter happened. Um, <laughs> Miroslav has got a question. Uh, what he wanted to ask is whether one is really legally allowed to run OKD with Red Hat build operators in production, obviously without OCP subscription because there are no restrictions meant to, mentioned on GitHub. That's what he meant. I think I can answer that. Um, I'm going to make a lot of legal people angry, but nevertheless. Um, in OKD world, we do not put any restrictions on, on you. What we do is we allow you to install without an else, uh, without a pull secret, uh, unlike OCP. But if you use that um, pull secret to pull in um, operators from Red Hat catalog, the restrictions put put on you by signing in on Cloud Red Hat still apply. These restrictions apply, meaning uh, after 60 days, you have to change your subscription from eval to standard or any other or remove the operators. Um, but since it being an OKD, meaning not a Red Hat product, which we support, you don't get support when you're installing the separators. Uh, but you can still use them. This is why all of those restrictions are not mentioned on GitHub because we depend on whatever end user a license agreement is set on cloud.threadhead.com and we don't feel like changing it every single time uh, this agreement changes. Uh, so yeah, that's basically the short answer. You get all the benefits without some of the benefits and all the restrictions obviously still apply. Yeah, if, if you don't use the pull secret and you don't pull in any operators from the subscription catalog, only the community or upstream operators, um, then you are free to use those in production as long as you want as well. If you don't use any of the subscription stuff, um, then you can use them as long and without any, any limitations. Did that answer your question, Miro? Oh, here comes another one. Um, is it possible to install ACM operator in OKD? If we just had I don't think anybody has built, built a community variant of that or tested it. Uh, it should be technically possible. You, you should be able to rebuild the ACM operator yourself and run it. Um, but we don't currently do the builds, I think. What um, important po point here is that OKD doesn't contain all of those operators itself. It only has a reference to catalog sources. So uh, you would need to reach out to operator framework folks who are 
building operators in those sources. We can add additional sources in um, OKD uh, if these are deemed to be useful, but we cannot control what these sources contain. These are slightly different team and slightly different project at all. However, we are glad to route all the experience because OKD folks are being on the receiving end of that to the operator folks, but uh, it's just not that easy. I think it's important to note that the OKD working group specifically concerns itself with the core system. That is the, the core operators that are part of the, the payload and the operating system itself, which is also part of the payload. Um, and then we have these operators from Operator Hub, which are optional operators. They're non-core operators. They can be on, installed uh, on top of the cluster, and those aren't part of OKD. Um, ACM is one example here, the OpenShift Pipelines operator uh, or Tecton operator. And there's a, a whole lot of uh, operators that are optional to OpenShift, and they are not included in the payload. And obviously, we as a working group want to uh, want to enable the usage of that and want to facilitate um, that, but we are not actually the same group that uh, would build the operators. We kind of build the release payload for the core system. And, and this goes back to OKD and OpenShift is a collaboration between many projects from Fedora CoreOS to the operator group to ACM across um, Red Hat and outside of Red Hat. So it's a, it's a, a lot of cross community collaboration to get these releases out and um, to then trace back when there are bugs. So um, it, it does take a lot of communication and, and Vadim and Christian have been amazing in helping to facilitate that over the past year to get us to where we're at right now. So um, it's, it's been an adventure to say the least. So, um, and we really appreciate all of the community in insights and feedback. And we're hoping that this next push around testing and documentation will make it even easier for everybody to join and um, give us feedback and help us um, trace down some of those bugs and um, make sure that all the operators you need are there as well. And I think we, we've heard uh, all these bugs a lot here. Uh, it's mostly really um, installation or upgrade um, issues. So I think when, once you have the, the platform running, um, it is very stable. It is just the initial installation that um, we still have uh, some issues with on some platforms sometimes. Um, and then upgrades, uh, I think we, we need to do a little bit better um, in terms of testing there, but uh, it's it should all like you should be able to recover even an upgrade that fails uh, by rolling back usually and um so yeah if, if you get if the installation actually uh succeeds which it usually does but there is i think the, yeah most of our issues we get is for installation failures uh, sometimes you just have to try again because your infrastructure was too slow or something that there, there, there's just a whole plethora of, of possible causes there which is why why those issues are still open um but yeah, I think once you actually have the system running, um, it is a very stable system. I would like to add that in when you compare that to Kubernetes and plain installations, the OKD has a very important difference. It's um, based on RPM OS3 and on operators pattern, meaning all of the system state is encoded on the file system that is taken care of by RPM OS3 and in etcd effectively. So as long as you make etcd backups, you should be able to restore them from scratch and operators will make sure that your cluster state is being restored and uh, the file system uh, state is being taken care of by RPM OS3. You would be able to put into the previous deployment, which has the right files. So uh, breaking a cluster is, well, trivial, but restoring uh, so is. You would just put into the previous uh, file system and restore it city from the backups. And there is no hidden uh, parameters file, no TF state, no Ansible scripts, which are external to the cluster. Everything 
information about the cluster is encoded in itself. So it should be trivial to restore it. One of, and, and I apologize, Christian, if, it, if I keep making it sound like there's tons of bugs in OKD, there aren't. As you say, it's, it's the install and the upgrades that um, are really um, the thing because we really do get the benefit of um, the entire OpenShift engineering team drilling down on all of this um, for customers. And in some ways, rather than an upstream project, um, we kind of refer to OKD as a sibling stream project. So as things get worked out in OpenShift itself, um, we get the benefit of that in OKD as well. So um, there's there's this good points and, and bad points of the siblings uh, stream um, process, but it has really benefited. Once you do get this deployed, um, we get the benefit of a lot of engineering effort. So um, it's it's just, uh, and I think that's probably why I keep focusing back on the testing um, and making sure because testing and getting it deployed, once you've got that done and we've got all the recipes for that, um, we're pretty much gold. <laughs>